Welcome back, everybody. The aim today is to discuss in more detail the uh, project and the outline of the project, and uh, also to link that with uh, what we did last week and what we uh, uh, are going to do this week. And then uh, uh, most likely this week, we will use a little, more, little bit more than one lecture but the aim is to present the project so that you uh, have the possibility to think it over and see where you stand and how much you uh, need to uh, uh, read about, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the um, aim today is more to, uh, as I said, is to finalize this discussion of the uh, variational quantum eigenvalue solver and the Lipkin model, which is going to be the, the model which will follow us for the project. And then basically to discuss the project here. So what I wanted to give you first now is a uh, discussion of the project. And then we are going back to the Lipkin model and say something about the variational quantum uh, eigenvalue solver. And uh, go a little bit back and forth between these different uh, uh, slides and the project itself. So if you go back to the main GitHub site of the, of the course, and if you click on this doc folder, uh, you will then find a link to the project. And I think we can just stay with one main project and you can keep elaborating on that. And there you will find as usual, the different variants like a PDF variant, uh, there's a Jupyter notebook, and that's the one which I'm going to discuss today. And then there is also different, there are also different HTML versions. But let's take a closer look at the project and uh, what I would like to suggest. Again, feel free to uh, make modifications to this. So you should not feel, how to say, constrained to only work on what I've suggested here. So let's uh, take a look at the project itself. So this is built up in a kind of pedagogical way. And uh, as I understood from you when we met in person two weeks ago, uh, there was an intention that one could meet on Thursdays. But the, this depends a little bit on your schedules. And it's always beneficial to actually collaborate and, and discuss things together. So the... Uh, the project has uh, uh, first some kind of warm-up exercises, and you can choose a little bit here uh, how you want to do that. The um, uh, main aim is actually to implement this VQE algorithm, and you can uh, choose whether you want to run this uh, with the Qiskit as a, a library or in software, or if you want to write the uh, codes yourself. Or alternatively, doing both and then comparing uh, what Qiskit gives with what you have developed. So the article we will follow is an article which was published recently, where they actually apply uh, the uh, quantum eigen solvers and set up the circuits and everything on the Lipkin model. Now, the ben benefits of this Lipkin model is that it can be rewritten in terms of these quasi-spin operators, which means again, that it lends itself almost uh, automatically to uh, being rewritten in terms of uh, poly uh, matrices. So the first part here is more kind of warm up, where you uh, we want you to set up a one qubit basis and uh, apply the various poly matrices to these basis states uh, get familiar with the Hadamard and the phase gates, and also define, let's say, one of the Bell states, and then apply a Hadamard gate, and thereafter C0 gate on one of the Bell states, and thereafter you perform a measurement. Like in this case, you can perform a measurement on the first qubit, and thereafter you do one on the qubit, and then you interpret the results. And uh, next week, um, when we... Um, when you have had time to look at the project, I wanted to say a little bit more about measurements. We have covered this in uh, the lectures about how to measure a specific qubit and how you actually do project out that specific qubit. So the uh, uh, 
first step here is actually you to uh, try to implement the uh, measurement operators, which is a projection operator on one of the qubits. And then you should uh, encode a Hadamard gate, which acts on the, a bell state, and which means it acts on one of the qubits. And thereafter, you have a C0 gate. And just to set up these, you can do that with the Qiskit. Uh, alternatively, you can uh, both write your own code and compare with Qiskit. So this is a kind of warm-up exercise in order to uh, have you develop uh, a feeling of uh, what these operations actually mean. So feel free to ask questions. Let me know if you have questions here. Uh, don't hesitate to do that. So, and also let me know if something sounds unclear. So these are just basic operations on uh, one qubit states and two qubit states. And other two qubit states will single out the bell states, which are a kind of standard benchmark cases used in uh, these kind of uh, demonstrations. And we have gone through that in the lectures in different week, during different weeks. Then the next part is us now moving over to a Hamiltonian system. And we are going to look at a uh, generic two by two matrix, uh, which actually is a, a system uh, where we're going to let the interaction part of the Hamiltonian to have a given strength. And that will allow us to uh, uh, study also what is called avoided level crossings, which then actually have uh, an important uh, uh, consequence if we are studying entanglement. So in this specific case, we start with a symmetric matrix and where we let this Hamiltonian be split into uh, what we normally call in many body physics, an unperturbed part and an interaction part, H of I. A I stands for interaction. So the uh, unperturbed part is now given in terms of uh, a diagonal matrix. So it has only E1 and E2. And these E1s and E2s are actually the uh, eigenvalues of the non-interacting part of the Hamiltonian. So it's pretty common to uh, separate a money body problem or a money body Hamiltonian in terms of a uh, interacting part and a non-interacting part. And the non-interacting part is often a part which can be solved analytically. This is uh, often a, a benefit in money body calculations because then you have a basis which you can use to uh, uh, calculate the interacting part and then expand the exact solution in terms of that basis. So in this specific case, we have a, a zero qubit state, which is just the polyspino, one zero. And then we have the uh, uh, qubit one, which is the other polyspino, which is zero and one. And these are just two orthogonal computational one qubit basis states, as we have been discussing throughout the semester here. Now you can actually rewrite this kind of uh, uh, Hamiltonian problem or this Hamiltonian matrix in terms of uh, poly spin matrices. And it's uh, pretty straightforward to see that you can rewrite this H0 in terms of a uh, diagonal matrix I plus a sigma Z matrix. And here I have defined this epsilon as E1 plus E2 divided by two and this omega is simply E1 minus E2 divided by two. And when you do the math, that gives you back the matrix which you see here. So what I'm preparing for now is something which later we will use uh, uh, on a quantum computer and where we have rewritten the Hamiltonian in terms of poly matrices. And then we can rewrite the interacting piece in terms of the um, and diagonal matrix and a sigma Z and a sigma X matrix. So the sigma X matrix take, takes care of the non-diagonal matrix elements, which means that uh, what we have done here is simply to call the non-diagonal matrix elements H12 and H21. And we have labeled them in terms of uh, V12 and V21. Similarly, uh, we have this interacting piece, which is V1 and V22 on the diagonal. And we rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of the diagonal matrix and the sigma C matrix, which then sets up the diagonal matrix elements. 
And then we are going to let this Hamiltonian depend on a strength parameter lambda. So which means that uh, there will be a strength parameter lambda, which is multiplied with this H of I here. And when you have this strength parameter, you can then diagonalize. And I just suggest some simple values here for these parameters. And then uh, the non-interacting solution is going to represent the computational basis. Uh, one thing you will notice is that when lambda is larger than two thirds, then the lowest eigenvalue is actually dominated by the other computational state, uh, which means that uh, you have a avoided level crossing. So uh, this part is something we want you to solve by standard eigenvalue solvers. And you can do that since it's a two by two matrix, you can actually solve it analytically. And, or you can just do it numerically. I mean, either way is equally fine. There is uh, no kind of deeper insight in uh, either doing it from, uh, analytically or numerically. But the thing is that uh, you have now the exact eigenvalues and we are going to compare these in part C here with what we will get from a uh, quantum eigen solver. So that means that the, the challenge now, for which you will have, this is the first challenge piece, is actually to implement this variational quantum eigen solver. You can do that with Qiskit by following the, uh, the slides, which we have for this week. There is an example there where you simply rewrite your Hamiltonian in terms of Pauli matrices, like we did here. And then you can transfer that to Qiskit and you can use the variational quantum eigen solver, which follows Qiskit. Uh, but in this specific case, it's also useful to write your own uh, circuit for it and set it up and then uh, perform the calculations. So you can feel, you should feel free to use either Qiskit or your own code, which then would be based on the set of from part A, or you can do both approaches. So this is very much up to you. If you feel that you don't have the time to do the uh, uh, full coding, you can easily use Qiskit here. And Qiskit is also a useful way to get started with setting up the, the, the circuits and everything. If you go back to the, um, to the beginning of the slides here, you will also find examples on how you can start setting up uh, circuits in uh, using Qiskit. And there is a very useful example here which gets you started. And that's an example which you can actually apply to this case with the bell states and the C0 gate. So the uh, you actually have an example which is partly solved for part A. And this could uh, get you started with uh, part C, where you also have to set up the uh, VQE solver. But you can, again, use Qiskit in order to, to uh, solve the problem here. Any questions so far? Something which is sounds unclear? OK. If there are no problems, then we move over to the next case, which is now us going from a two by two matrix to a four by four matrix. And that means that we are going to get some practice with a two qubit system. And the two qubit system is going to be pretty parallel to what we will get with this Lipkin model when we have the angular momentum equal to one. So because then we get a three by three matrix which we, when we convert that one into a qubit system, is going to be given by a four by four matrix. So this part D can be seen as a kind of warm up for the uh, Lipkin model. And the simpler case where we have a total angular momentum equal to one, and it's a system which has two particles. Okay, so uh, you could think of this as a system which is now composed of two subsystems. A and B, and each subsystem has a computational uh, basis state, uh, which are given by uh, the standard uh, qubit zero and qubit one. And then we can set up the new computational basis states, which are now given by uh, the qubit zero in system A and cross uh, and, and tensor product with qubit zero in uh, system B. And that gives us this state here. And if you continue, you will also easily see that all these states are orthogonal to each other. So these states define 
a new computational basis, which now applies to the two qubit system. In this specific case, we are going to, again, let uh, this uh, computational basis states be the eigen uh, basis for the non-interacting part of the Hamiltonian. It means that the exact solution, when we diagonalize that with a Hamiltonian matrix, is going to be a linear expansion in terms of these computational basis states. So if we just scroll down, uh, you will then see that I propose a simple Hamiltonian matrix where I have some parameters, this H of X and H of Z are just the interaction strength parameters and they are put to the same values. And it's given by the cross product of a sigma X with a sigma X and a sigma Z with a sigma Z. So the sigma Z gives us the diagonal elements and the sigma X gives us the non-diagonal matrix elements. And we end up with a matrix which is going to look like this. And then we can play around with the uh, different values of h of x and h of z multiplied with the uh, strength parameter. So we can actually, uh, again, let this Hamiltonian, or well, I didn't put it up here, but we can let the Hamiltonian now, this h of i, be multiplied with an interaction strength, which goes from 0 to 1. So when the interaction strength is equal to 1, that means that we have the fully interacting system. So the problem again is one where we can now diagonalize. And in this case, it's straightforward to just use standard numerical diagonalization. And what we want to do here is actually to calculate the density matrix for one of the states. And we could pick the ground state, which is a linear expansion of these different computational basis states. And when we diagonalize, what we get are these coefficients alpha 0, 0, alpha 1, 0, etc. So these are the coefficients which follow from the eigenvectors from the solution of the eigenvalue problem. And then we can trace out the density matrix for the different subsets and compute the von Neumann entropy. So this is an exercise where we actually want to study the degree of entanglement in one of the subsystems. Remember now that the, the uh, state which you have here, this uh, psi zero is uh, exactly defined in terms of these coefficients. So that is a pure state. What you're going to see is that these are mixed states and you will get a an entanglement entropy here or an entropy, which is non-zero, depending on the strength of the interaction. And here you can se select some parameters. So this would be the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, unperturbed energies, the eigenvalues for H0, and here you can put some interaction strength. So the idea here is actually to compute the eigenvalues using standard eigenvalue solvers, and thereafter compute the von Neumann entropy for one of the subsystems. So this uh, is more meant to give you some feeling on how we can discuss entanglement and what it means. Any questions so far about the uh, the project? Okay, so the um, next thing is now to compute the eigenvalues of this system, but using DQE. And then you need to set up the circuits which are needed. So what you have is the Hamiltonian matrix in terms of the uh, Pauli spin matrices. And that means that you can easily convert this one into a series of gates acting on the different qubits. So keep in mind that this one acts on qubit in the system B, and this acts on the qubits in system A. And same with the, uh, the first term, which is the sigma x tensor product sigma x. So you should put labels on these according to which qubit uh, they are acting on. So with that, you can then uh, set up the circuits which are needed in order to obtain the eigenvalues. And keep again in mind that the eigenvalues are given through a series of measurements. So the eigenvalues uh, would have to be recalculated again and again. And then you would take finally the average value of all the measurements which you have, as you did in part A, when you were looking at the measurements on a two qubit system, uh, after you have performed the Hadamard gate operation and the C0 operation. 
So uh, again, in this path E, you should feel free to use either your own code or and your VQE code, or you can use the functionality of Qiskit, or you can do both. So this is something which I will leave to you uh, uh, to decide upon what you want to do. And from my own point of view, I'd say it's beneficial to actually try to write your own code and then compare that with Qiskit. But in case you are running out of time, uh, this is uh, uh, to use just Qiskit is uh, a viable approach. Now, what we are going to do next now is to switch to a more realistic system. And in our case, we are going to use this Lipkin model, which is a popular model in many body physics. It can be solved for as many particles as you want. And it allows you also to bake in uh, uh, terms in the Hamiltonian, which represent typically realistic uh, uh, types of interactions in many body systems. So it's a very popular model. And it has also analytical solutions for half four calculations. And this is something I will come back to in, 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 the, in the lecture notes. So if you're interested in mean field solutions and the full spectrum of this Lipkin model, uh, there is a lot of uh, theoretical uh, interesting, uh, lots of theoretical interesting results. So again, the paper we're going to refer to is this one. And we are going to look at the two uh, systems. So J equal one corresponds to two particles interacting and J equal two corresponds to four particle interacting. You can obviously increase this. You and you're not limited to an even number of particles. If you have an odd number of particles, since these are fermions, then you're going to get uh, uh, spin half values for the total spin. The um, uh, J equal two case is a case where you have now uh, five spin projections. So J goes JZ, the projection goes from minus two to plus two. So the, the, it has a degeneracy of five, and that's why you have a five by five matrix. And the J equal one case has a degeneracy of three, and that gives you a three by three Hamiltonian matrix. So what we did last week was actually to uh, set up the Hamiltonian now in terms of uh, the unperturbed part, which now runs over the state label P and the spin label. So this is our spin half particles with spin. Uh, so it runs over two levels. Sigma, so you can have a projection of minus a half, which you could think of spin down, and plus a half, which you can think of as a spin up. So I'm coming back to this when I want to refresh the Lipkin model for you. And uh, in this case, we have the spin value, and then we have these parameters epsilons, which are the single particle energies. And uh, there is an interaction piece, which runs in terms of uh, creation and annihilation operators, like this. And then there is a second term which uh, is slightly different. And we could actually rewrite this in terms of uh, what I call the quasi spin operators. And this is what is going to allow us to rewrite this Hamiltonian in terms of sigma z, sigma x, and sigma y gates. And that is a Hamiltonian here where we don't need to make a more involved transformation of the operators and second quantizations to poly x, Y and Z matrices. So what we showed last time, after a lot of the tedious algebra, is that you can rewrite these Hamiltonians in terms of a spin projection operator, JZ, times this constant epsilon. And the interacting piece is given in terms of this quasi-spin operators, where J plus is a linear combination of JX plus I, imaginary number times JY. So that means that these can easily, uh, for spin half systems can be rewritten in terms of uh, sigma X and sigma Y. And uh, the same with JC, which uh, for a uh, two qubit system, uh, that no, not two qubit, a one qubit system is the same as a sigma Z matrix. So this is something if we just have a, a one qubit, this could be a sigma z matrix. If we have two qubits, this would be a sigma z tensor product with an identity matrix because it acts on one qubit at a time. 
And you can see that because these J's, uh, if we go back to the definition from last week, which I'm going to repeat quickly, the uh, matrix, no, the operator J is a sum of a single particle operators. So it acts on one particle at a time. So for a many qubit system, we can actually write this as the tensor product of uh, a sigma C matrix with uh, various uh, identity matrices. And the same thing is something which we can do with uh, J plus and J minus here, whether we have uh, two particles, four particles, etc., etc. If we have two particles, this is going to be a two qubit system translated into that. And this means that we are going to have the uh, cross product with the, the, sorry, the tensor product of a um, identity matrix with a poly matrix. Now we are going to leave out this H2 in the beginning. So the type of calculations which we're going to run and those which were run in that paper, they are done with uh, this W equal to zero. This can also be rewritten in terms of the number operator and the J plus and J minus matrices. So what we can show, and this is one of the things I want you to uh, show is that for J equal one, uh, you end up with this matrix. This is a three by three matrix. And then for J equal to five, you end up with this matrix here. If you put W different from zero. So you can choose now to have a, a W equal to zero, or you can do the more general case and add this parameter W. And for five by five matrix, which we developed last week, we end up with this Hamiltonian matrix here. And this corresponds to a spin projection uh, of minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two, when you have the total, total spin equal to two here. So you have four spin half particles, and they can obviously couple to a total spin projection equal to two. So that means that all the particles are in a spin half state or they can have j equal minus two, which means that all the particles in a spin minus two state. Alternatively, I can have a, a one, two with a spin up and spin down, and two with spin down, which gives me a minus one, et cetera, et cetera. So these states uh, were states which we constructed uh, last week. So this will be the Hamiltonian matrix. And uh, we want you to find uh, the Hamiltonian here, uh, in order to rewrite the Hamiltonian problem on a quantum computer, we need to rewrite this in terms of poly spin matrices. So in the lecture notes for this week, we actually have this matrix here rewritten in terms of uh, poly spin matrices. And there is an example where I use the VQE solver, which follows uh, Qiskit. So this is the challenge in this part and uh, there's a challenge exercise here if you set up the Hamiltonian with a W term as well in terms of the poly spin matrices and then you would diagonalize using classical methods and uh, find the eigenvalues as a function of the strength of the interaction V while you keep the single particle energies fixed so you can let this V be a parameter which you vary. Uh, I'm going to add results from Hartree-Fock theory which you can just plug in as a comparison. So this is something which will come a little bit later here. Now, uh, you can, uh, uh, the, no, the reason why I, I add this Hartree-Fock piece, this is totally optional, is because the Hartree-Fock solutions are, which is a mean field solution are compared with the uh, exact eigenvalue problems in the paper, which we are going to use as a, as a reference paper. Now, the next thing, is that then to use the VQE method to find the same eigenvalues as in part F and set up the simulations which are needed to find the eigenvalues. And you should compare your results with those from part F and comment your results. And finally, uh, try to wrap up everything as a scientific article. And you can use the article in the physical review, uh, which we are linking to, as a template for your report. So this is... Uh, roughly the project and uh, we can keep adding upon this depending on uh, where we are after the uh, Easter break. Uh, we haven't, uh, I haven't plugged in anything about uh, uh, quantum machine learning here. 
And this is something which we can discuss after Easter break. So I would also like to suggest that we keep having lectures till the end of the semester, roughly. Or alternatively, that we just meet for, for discussions of the, of the project. So this is roughly the outline of, uh, of the project. Uh, there are many small uh, steps, and this part A and part B and part C, and also part D, with simpler Hamiltonians, they serve as a kind of a, a start for the case where we now look at the Lipkin model. So one of the things which I wanted to remind you about before we take a small break is uh, the mathematics of this Lipkin model. And if we go back to the uh, slides from last week, so what we did last week was actually to look at the this uh, the basics of this Lipkin model. And what we have are two levels. And if we have four particles, this uh, parameter P, which plays the role of uh, or replaces uh, spatial uh, quantum mechanical degrees of freedom. For the case with N equal four, that means four particles, we have a P equal one, two, three, four. So these are slots which each particle can take. And there are two levels only. One with the spin plus one and one with spin minus one. This is actually two times the value. So actually it's a, you can think of this as a, the plus one as a spin up and minus one as a spin down. And they have their own energies. So they have a epsilon a half for the uh, epsilon one and minus epsilon divided by two for the other state, which corresponds to a spin down state. And you can have four particles in each of these uh, spin states. So that means that we have, uh, if you're familiar with the formalism of second quantizations, so these are things which not everybody's familiar with. And uh, the material which we went through last week is more meant as a background material. And in uh, our case, what we have is a Hamiltonian, which now has three terms, one which corresponds to the non-interacting case. So if we have two particles, this would be a two qubit system, which we translated into when we're looking at these different spin matrices. And if we have four particles, this is going to be a, a four qubit system, et cetera, et cetera. So the uh, different uh, H's here, uh, and in our case, this H2 is a, is a term which we don't need to study. In that paper, it was not included. And normally the Lipkin model, the way it has been presented historically, contains only H0 and H1. H2 adds more realistic, uh, additional realistic types of interactions. So the operator H1 moves a pair of fermions, while H2 is normally what we call a spin exchange term, and you can see that from the definition here because it changes the spin of a, of a, a fermion pair. So there's a lot of uh, uh, money body jargon here. And you, if you're not too familiar with that, you don't need to uh, think too much in those terms. And what we did was to rewrite everything in terms of uh, quasi spin operators. And note well now that these are single particle operators. So when you are going to rewrite your Hamiltonian now in terms of uh, poorly X, Y, and Z matrices, what is important then is to keep in mind that these operators act at one particle at a time. So if we have two qubits, we need to take the tensor product of a sigma uh, X, sigma Y, and sigma C matrix with the identity matrix, where the identity matrix then acts on one of the qubits and the sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z acts on the other qubit. If we have two qubits, if we have more qubits, then we need to take the tensor products with more identity matrices. So just keep this in mind when you're setting up the uh, Hamiltonian for a quantum mechanical or quantum computing calculation. So what we did last time was simply to go through all these manipulations and rewrite the Hamiltonian in terms of these uh, uh, quasi-spin operators. And when we did these exercises, uh, 
we also, uh, by the way, we also define the so-called number operator, which projects out the number of particles in the system. And when we did this, uh, what we ended up with was a uh, demonstration of the commutation relations. So these operators actually obey the standard commutation relations. And I'm not going to uh, to, rem to go through the these again because we discussed last, last time. And when you scroll down, then what we could do is that we could then rewrite the Hamiltonian in terms of these quasi-spin operators. And when we did that, if we just scroll down here, we could then rewrite H1 in terms of the J plus squared and J minus squared. And similarly, we could rewrite the uh, H2 terms in terms of J plus, J minus, J minus, J plus, and the number operator. So this gives us a uh, extremely useful representation of the Hamiltonian, which we then can reuse in uh, a qu quantum computing algorithms when we now rewrite the uh, uh, these operators in terms of the poly X, poly Y, and poly Z matrices. The other thing which we discussed was actually the commutation relation. So J squared commutes with the Hamiltonian, which means that we normally call that a good quantum number. J squared commutes also with JC, which means that the JC, the spin projection, is also a good quantum number. And what we did was simply to go through the all these derivations. It's not very exciting, uh, but we showed that the Hamiltonian commutes. And then, Using the uh, lowering operators, we could then construct the different states. So when we have j equal two, we have spin projections, minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. And that allows us then to set up uh, the different states by starting with a unique one, where we can only have one spin arrangement. All particles will spin down, and the particles are in the different slots, one, two, three, and four. And then we use the lowering and raising operators to construct the next states. So the same value of J, but then we have a JC plus one or JC minus one. And this gives rise to what some of you have met earlier in different quantum mechanics courses as kletsch gordon coefficients. So these actually define, would define the kletsch gordon coefficients. And this gives now when you can construct it, you end up with a, a Hamiltonian matrix, which looks like this in that specific basis. And uh, this is something which is pretty straightforward to diagonalize. And that is the uh, uh, first part where we use the Lipke model in the project. And then we are going to rewrite this in terms of quantum gates. Uh, I'm going to add something about the uh, Hartree-Fock theory. And last week, we also discussed the quantum eigensolver and how we can set it up. So what I wanted to discuss a little bit now is, uh, after a small break, we are going to look at the VQE algorithm and the Lipkin model and how we can implement it using K-Script. So I will uh, only use some uh, 15, 20 minutes of the next lecture, and then we're going to stop there. And then we... Uh, uh, you guys can decide whether you want to meet and collaborate. And when we meet again next Monday, we are going to look in more detail into how we can write our own code uh, and then compare that with Qiskit. So I'm going to stop a little bit now. Uh, so what I wanted to discuss next is actually the uh, this uh, the uh, how we could implement this uh, uh, Lipkin model and uh, what kind of results we could expect for the uh, J equal one case. So if you go back to the project, what I'm going to discuss now is actually this Hamiltonian problem where we have uh, two particles only and how we can rewrite that in terms of uh, gates and uh, poly X and poly Y matrices and Z matrices. So any questions so far? So I want to demonstrate this piece here. And uh, when we move on to the uh, more complicated case, then we uh, uh, need to uh, uh, think of uh, having four particles and four qubits in that case. But the first case is two particles, which again means two qubits when we translate this into 
uh, different Pauli matrices. And the Hamiltonian, which we are going to deal with, is this one, H1 and H0. So that means that we have a, a combination of uh, sigma X and sigma Y matrices and uh, a uh, sigma Z matrix. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pause the recording here and uh, we just meet uh, 15 minutes later, but feel free. So we're going to have a shorter session today uh, for the second lecture. And the main uh, intention behind this uh, shorter session is to link what you have in the project here with how you can uh, set up the VQE solver using Qiskit. And this is in the weekly slides for this week here. So back to the project, uh, after the uh, beginning uh, where we are setting up a simpler Hamiltonian, either a four by four one, and this can also be solved by Qiskit and the variational quantum eigensolver using the same procedure, which is in the weekly slides for this week. So you could alternatively, instead of starting with the Lipkin model, you could actually try to implement the VQE on this method here, and then compare that one with what you get from exact diagonalization. Similarly, you can make it even simpler and just go back to this two by two matrix, which we have here, and simply use that one to compute the uh, eigenvalues. So the um, Lipkin model, which we are going to translate in terms of uh, sigma Z and sigma X and sigma Y matrices is now given by these two uh, terms which are written in terms of the quasar spin operators. And these are operators which act on one particle at a time. So it's a G, JC, it's a J plus and a J minus. So J plus is a linear combination of uh, the JX operator plus I times JC. And J minus is uh, the corresponding one where we have minus I times JY. So uh, if we now go back to the uh, slides for this week, there is actually a uh, simple implementation of the Hamiltonian matrix, which we have. This is the first case, which we have. And uh, we are then plotting this, uh, the eigenvalues, which result from uh, diagonalizing this model, which you see here. And uh, we have a total spin of J equal to one. And uh, we co compute the matrix elements and we end up with a matrix, which looks like this where minus epsilon and no, epsilon and V are parameters which we can fix. And what you see here is also something which could be part of uh, the project where you simply set up the eigenvectors and let this run as a function of the parameters epsilon and V. And if you run that one, what you will get then, and you reorder the eigenvalues. So let me just rerun everything here. You will find the matrix and you will find the results for the exact Lipkin model as a function of this interaction strength C. So that would be the uh, uh, eigenvalues of the system which you have as a function of the uh, uh, parameter C, which is a strength of the interaction and where we kept the uh, single particle states fixed. And you can see that when you write out the Hamiltonian matrix here. So this is just uh, one uh, a simple implementation of this uh, free by free problem and where you have the exact eigenvalues which you can then compare to the uh, uh, quantum eigensolver. We are not going to look at the Hartree-Fox solution as of now, but when we are setting up the quantum circuit, what we need to do then when we are using the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, variational quantum eigensolver, we have a variational parameter theta which are going to vary in order to find the uh, uh, exact eigenstates. So the Hamiltonian, which we have now, takes uh, this specific form. So you have to pay attention a little bit now because we have one body operators. So we have a, uh, a sigma C matrix, which is this Z zero, which now acts on uh, qubit uh, zero. And that has a tensor product with the, the identity matrix, which leaves qubit uh, 
two unaffected, and similarly, or qubit one, so we have start with zero and one, and similarly, this is the uh, uh, operation which we get now when we act on qubit one and uh, leave uh, qubit zero unaffected. And similarly, we get the tensor product when we now rewrite, and this is something which I invite you to take a look at. We get then the tensor product of x0 and xi. So this acts on uh, qubit zero and this on qubit one. And similarly, we have the, uh, the sigma y matrix. So this is just another way of writing sigma x, sigma z, and sigma y. So, uh, so we have two particles in this case, and then that means that we end up with a two qubit state. Uh, and the Hamiltonian can then be rewritten when we look at this specific uh, notation, which we have here, it can be rewritten as a four by four matrix, which is acting on the two qubit state. And then we need to prepare the states. So we could now think of this as a kind of linear combination of uh, uh, the state, which we want to measure. And we could now uh, define the state zero, zero to be the one with spin ups and one, one with two spin downs. And uh, uh, what you will see here, and next week, we are going to discuss this a little bit more in detail on how we can write our own circuit. But here I just wanted to show you how you can use Qiskit and the quantum eigen solver, which is baked in into Qiskit. So uh, you would simply uh, set up the, the circuits which you want to deal with. So here's an example on how you can actually set up a circuit where you have an uh, a uh, rotation matrix which acts on qubit zero and then i have a uh, controlled plus operation here which acts on qubit one and leaves qubit zero unaffected so this is a typical example of a circuit which we can set up so in the uh, implementations which you have here we have been using uh, uh, the uh, uh, kiskits vqe function uh, that means that it sets up we need to specify the, the circuit we are using, the optimizer, and uh, uh, the kind of quantum instance. I'm coming back a little bit to this. And the initial point, I mean, where we search in this parameter space theta, and then we need to specify the Hamiltonian. And to specify the Hamiltonian, you can use the Qiskit poly operator functions, and which then contain the identity matrix, uh, sigma, z, x, and y. Uh, for a given parameter C, we will then do a search of a theta from minus pi half to plus, plus pi half and pick out the minimum eigenvalue. So this is a specific simulator which we're coming back to. And in the optimization here, so this code is pretty slow <clears throat> when you run it with, uh, with, uh, uh, with all these iterations with the Adam method. Here I'm setting up the parameters. And this is going to be the set of parameter chi, which represent the strength of the interaction. Uh, I set up the steps for the parameter and then a loop over the interaction strength parameters. And in this specific case, what I'm doing now is to uh, define my Hamiltonian first, as you can see here. So I have the uh, different matrices here. And then I have my sigma x and the sigma y matrices. So I have defined the Hamiltonian. And then I use the VQE with an ansatz on a Lipkin model circuit, which I'm setting up a little bit uh, down here. And you will find this is the, where did I put that one? Yeah, a little bit more up here. And then the result now is the VQE ansatz where I now compute the minimum eigenvalue. And um, uh, this plots the results as a function of this parameter chi. And uh, depending on the, uh, the type of uh, optimizer I have and so on, this will take more time or less time. I'm not going to show the results now. And if you use Qiskit here, you can actually in the functionality which you have, you can then uh, specify the type of, um, so this is actually a calculation which is run with the Qiskit's own a VQE solver, uh, you will be able then to uh, uh, basically see that you will get the exact, more or less the exact eigenvalue. So I wanted to give you this as a small uh, kind of uh, background for the project. And then uh, since this is a shorter session today, 
Uh, we are going to use uh, more time next week to uh, dissect what this actually means. But I just wanted to give you the kind of, uh, uh, how to say, basic recipe by which you can use Qiskit in order to find these eigenvalues. Now, if you go back to the project, you could actually use this uh, for both this uh, uh, four by four matrix, which we put up here, or the simple two by two matrix, which is perhaps even simpler, which now refers to just one, uh, which is just a one qubit case. So I would advise you when you're starting to play around with um, a Qiskit and the VQE solver to actually use the simpler problem, which we have in part B and in uh, part D as well. So part B here has a follow-up with part C where you now implement this above this Hamiltonian uh, using the uh, VQE solver, which is provided by Qiskit. And we will also discuss next week how we can set up our own code for doing that and then compare that with the, the Qiskit solver. Similarly, uh, I would advise you to take the uh, simple uh, four by four matrix, which we have here, and try this out with Qiskit and also your own approach to the problem. So this is going to end uh, today's uh, uh, session with an outline of the project. Uh, you will receive an email later today with uh, plans for the rest of the semester and how we are going to proceed with the project and what are the plans for next week as well. So I'm going to stop the recording mainly because I have a uh, meeting I have to be at, sorry for that. So today's session is a little bit shorter, uh, but I hope you have uh, enough material so that we can actually get started with the project.